Bodyguards here in Little Rock, Arkansas for my new movie, The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Oh, Antonio, you muffin smuggling pirate puncher. You do not disrespect Antonio Banderas. I am Boots and Boots. I don't speak any language and I'm, why am I doing Italian instead of Hispanic? Hi, Ryan Reynolds here. Just dropping in on the racism that I'm kind of detecting. Cucaracha, is that what she says? Morgan Freeman is in this. I'm not doing, I'm not doing Morgan Freeman. I, I can't touch the voice of God. I want to do Salma Hayek. I'm so tired of these mother snakes. I swear. On these mother planes. You think you can do Antonio Banderas? I can do Antonio Banderas. All right, I'm done with this. Go and get a Royale with cheese, motherfuckers. <laughs>everybody welcome to tavern talk i am philip and joining me this week mr isaac sims how's it going thank you for being here isaac i first and foremost appreciate you taking the time to to be here and i'm glad you're here because you host a podcast uh flyover film podcast flyover Flyover film Film country Country. yeah Uh, no tell me a little bit more i know uh it's kind of got a specific like hook to it so tell me a little sure. bit more about the podcast. So Flavor Film Country was uh, started by myself and my good friend Olivia Clement and she lives in Oklahoma so we were able to hook up some uh, production deal with a guy out of Conway, Arkansas, uh, Ready Set Podcast. So okay. pre plug for them, they're great <laughs> and uh, they he helped us get it going and we record everything over Zoom and we added another host, um, Eric Pham and so uh, the three of us went to UCA together, oh, and awesome, we yeah. record about movies, um, and sometimes TV, but mostly movies, set in places off forgotten by Hollywood. So yeah. Arkansas, Mississippi, Oklahoma, flyover country. Flyover, that's I was going to say, that makes our, perfect sense. Yeah. That's our thing. Well, we saw what, you know, is kind of a, a generic type movie tonight, and it definitely wouldn't fit into uh, flyover film country, or, you know, it's, it's a globetrotting movie movie but there were definitely too, there were too many locations so many locations count. we're going to like multiple places in italy and then <laughs> and also like croatia frank grillo was making fun of the scottish character <laughs> yeah. i was like that was like how of left field but kind of funny so, yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah we're jumping a, a little bit ahead uh, if you don't know this week uh we're talking about the hitman's or Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard, yep. which is a sequel to 2017's uh, The Hitman's Bodyguard, which starred Samuel L. Jackson and Ryan Reynolds and Selma Hayek. Um, this one, also all three of them, Selma Hayek in a little bit of a bigger capacity this time around. Um, but yeah, I, this is one of those ones uh, I didn't expect there to be a sequel to this movie. It must First, have made a lot of money. Okay, great, yeah, money. Something. I, I, I wasn't yeah. even like, it felt, you know, looking back, I don't remember exactly when it came out. It feels like like a September movie, mm-hmm. you know, like yes, one of those kind yeah, of. That's a good way. It just is like, yeah, this is, you know, a, a genre action comedy. It's not anything that's part of a, you know, pre-established uh, IP property. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, okay, cool. You know, it's, it's kind of nice to see like a little throwback actioner. And, you know, Sam Jackson and Ryan Reynolds, interesting pairing, mm-hmm. uh, always endearing, um, always funny. And so it's just like, okay, cool, this could be fun. And it was fine. Yeah. Like, um, I have to ask, though, so you did not, you have not seen the original. I've not seen the original, full disclosure. <laughs> so, well, no, that's kind of, kind of interesting to yeah. see, like, how this played uh, to someone who hadn't, you know, seen this chemistry before or didn't know what exactly the story was about. So, sure. yeah, initial reaction to... Hitman's wife's bodyguard. I mean, what'd you think? So I was coming into this kind of expecting Fast and Furious light. You almost had me. Which is more or less, I feel, what we got. Yeah. You never had me. You never had your car. But at the same time, and and I would know this if I had seen the first one, but (laughs) Salma Hayek is a major player in this film. And she honest, for me, stole the show. And I, I was laughing mostly at her lines because she was so over the top and clearly having a blast. Yes. Which I, I I'm, I'm all for that no matter what's happening with the script or cinematography or pacing. Um, all three of which I feel like we're not very, 
<laughs> not very good, uh, but you know what? We're, we're there for, for our three three main stars. So. That's it. I think you really hit on something there is that I couldn't recite the plot of this or like tell you what um, Antonio Banderas is the bad guy. I couldn't tell you what his plan is or what. Was his name was Aristotle? Aristotle was his name. It Plut was Plutarch? I don't even know. <laughs> we don't know. I don't even know. I just know he was trying to. There was a diamond tip drill. There was a diamond tri tip drill. He, was he trying to destroy Italy to save Greece? Or maybe it was the other way around? They Something like all that. Of, all of the EU's energy system was linked on a grid and by dr by drilling into I'm already impressed just <laughs> by so drilling you. into one of the conduits they could set off a chain reaction and explode everything yeah and, and they were going to drill into one at the bottom of the ocean in the very edge of I can't remember <laughs> I don't know no I, that's trend, that's already more the, than this yeah. movie deserves honestly yeah. like you remembered more than it wanted you to probably because like like I said it the plot doesn't matter mm -hmm. essentially this is just a platform for Sam Jackson, Ryan Reynolds, and Selma Hayek to just kind of have fun, drop some one-liners, yep. go through some cool action sequences, and then end up hopefully with the audience like being a little bit more endeared to them and hoping to go on another adventure with them. Uh -huh. And uh, I didn't love the first one. Yeah. Like I thought it was even with the promise of you know uh, Sam Jackson and Ryan Reynolds chemistry, like I was. I was a little let down by it because it just it didn't look great like you're saying mm -hmm. like the cinematography the first one this one actually looked better than the first one i don't know if it was yep. the same cinematographer or anything but the la the first one was real hazy and like mm -hmm. it seemed intentional but it was like a bad style choice this one at least felt a little crisper even in the pacing like it felt lighter and um i just kind of wanted to talk about that because that yeah. felt like the main upside to this whole thing is that it knows what it is yep. and just kind of leaned into that a little harder like you had multiple <clears throat> moments where there was a you could tell it was a faux dramatic moment yeah. where like either ryan reynolds or sama hayek is like you know thinking thinking their own thoughts and having some kind of profound experience and then someone interrupts it by dropping the f-bomb or right. whatever and then there's a literal record scratch like, yes My which is extremely 2000s but i'm like whatever like like we're here seeing people get shot in the head that's and, a perfect way to put yeah. it yeah so and and ron reynolds not use a gun for the first uh three quarters of the movie yeah really yeah and and to hilarious effect because he uses pepper spray right like, yeah take people out and you know there are some bits in this that i was like this is great like um it adds like a lot of backstory to some of the characters here that I don't know if it would have even like lined up yes. with the first movie, but the backstories are incredibly ridiculous, yeah. just outlandish yep. and and like jarring. And yes. that's the other thing that I that I appreciate and I want to give credit to this movie where it's like it felt rushed, mm -hmm. but then when you get to the point where they test the diamond tipped drill yeah. and kill 75 people and it happens literally in the span of like two seconds, yeah. And then you're like, oh shoot, 75 people in this in Greba or wherever or are dead right. and then you get to we do spoilers right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I'll throw it yeah and then uh, and then Ryan Reynolds mom's fate as a young boy is like ridiculous she gets killed at a theme park uh, I was like oh man so that's why gelato scared her. yeah he's, he's scarred by trauma the is sign linked of to gelato. gelato yeah yes and uh, one of my favorite one of those was uh, and we talked about this just a second ago <laughs> Is like the fact that it takes the time to introduce and name these two like henchmen, <laughs> R.I.P. Gary and Johan, um, and then just to immediately yeah. like still take them out, yeah. uh, like it's like by naming them, it's going to make them feel a little bit better about it or something, yeah. or that we might think it, it could turn out differently. But no, Gary and Johan are goners. But uh, no, I, I like I enjoy the those aspects of it. Like yeah. I said, I'm not here for story or cinematography or to learn a lesson about friendship or you know the like you said the fast and furious family it's not you know it's not about who you're related to um, you know through your bloodline it's all about who's there for you like it's saying all those same things but it's like it's kind of half shruggingly saying those things yeah i i have been reflecting on ryan reynolds today kind of in like preparation for right. for this movie and still think it's it's amazing that he's he's carved this really specific niche as like a 
a self-deprecating white guy who is always he, he's an asshole in Deadpool and <laughs> and then opposite someone like Sam Jackson he's nerdy he's and, the, yeah and, and he's true. neither of he's neither of those extremes in real life right and so I appreciate that yeah I appreciate that about no him. that's really interesting because it, it, you know he does he does every now and then one of these like action comedies and it's like how invested are you in this or uh -huh. was it just like a paycheck gig and he feels like he's fully in on like making this work yep. I guess sure. is a way is the best way to put it um, which kind of took me me by surprise and so I kind of like was like appreciating it a little more than I thought I would because I definitely expected this to be like D plus at the best uh -huh. you know so yeah. I don't know I I, I I went in with low expectations, but I was I was kind of pleasantly surprised by it. And uh, and you're right, like I'm glad they utilized Salma Hayek um, a lot more than they did in the first one. Yeah. She's uh, she's she stole the show. We were yeah. just talking about Ryan Reynolds, but she she steals the show. She's so funny in this movie. <laughs> yeah, she definitely yeah. matches Sam Jackson's like not just like curse word using level, right. uh, which is astronomical in this movie. Yeah. But, uh, in Spanish and English. Yeah. yeah. Her energy is there. Sam Jackson's a little bit more reserved in this one, actually. Yeah. kind of just, just hanging out in the backseat. I remember um, I remember listening to either an interview or a podcast, um, and Sam Jackson had told Joss Whedon when they were filming, no, it was, it was the Russo brothers when they were filming The Winter Soldier, like, I ain't running like I'm running from here to there and like I'm not running anymore do you know how old I am yeah. and this was like 2014 or whatever so I can only imagine like he's still showing up like yeah. he's still showing up like delivering his amazing gravitas in in movies you know like, the, yeah. like this but also like we're gonna get to see him in um what was the preview for that movie that we oh the protege yeah the protege yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, like the John Wick yeah dude's uh, working yeah he's, he's, he's still doing it he's still, he's still doing it and it, it did he's crack still me up Fury so yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it did crack me up that I mean Sam Jackson's like 70 years old yes and one of the main like through lines of this story is that him and Selma Hayek want to have children yes. and make a family like I was just like okay are we in the rest? Hitman's Wife's Bodyguards universe he's like 45 definitely <laughs> definitely gotta be like yeah. no older than 50. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was hilarious and uh, just another way that like the writers were just like yeah we know this is ridiculous but we're just gonna go with it because yeah. it's it's a good time it is what it is like I don't think there's a whole lot more to say about a movie like this I think if you know what you're getting yourself into you're probably gonna enjoy it like if you buy a ticket to this you know you know what you want and I think this will deliver on it you know like more I was than I not. was I was straight up like laughing and we both were and yeah like multiple times in the movie so if you if you want popcorn a popcorn flick this is this it was fun yeah it's fun it, but you're also able to like you're not drawn into it the way you're not going to see stunts like the fast and the furious granny shifting not double clutching like you should you're not going to have emotional you know investment in like marvel i am iron man but also theaters just opened back up so yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a fun, uh, it was directed, I should mention, it was directed by Patrick Hughes, who did, he did The Hitman's Bodyguard, he also did The Expendables 3. Uh, there are some pretty cool, we haven't really talked about the action sequence, but there are um, some pretty cool, like, oneers where you can tell the choreography of the fight scenes yes. were, uh, was really well executed and, and done, because he, he's just moving his camera from one mm -hmm. scenario to the next and not cutting and keeping it kind of wide and... Uh, so there, I mean, there's some there's some cool stuff there. He obviously knows what he's doing and yeah. knows how to make his way around an action scene. Uh, again, nothing like stunning, like you said, or like crazy, like a, a Fast and Furious stunt. But um, some some pretty cool stuff. And uh, so yeah, I mean, yeah, like like you said, if you, if you know what you're getting yourself into, you'll probably have a good time. I I had a lot more fun than I expected. Yeah. Uh, but here on Tavern Talk, we usually do out of five stars. So for Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard, got that right. Uh, <laughs> what would you uh, what would you go star rating wise? I give it I give it two. Yeah, give it a solid two. Uh, five. Yeah, that's I, I was kind of right there with you. I was gonna do two and a half just because it kind of felt like right down the middle, mm -hmm. exactly what it needed to be. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, so yeah, I mean, two and two and a half don't sound like hearty recommendations, but you know, again, it's it's a solid entry for what it is like. No, it's not going to win any Oscars, but are you going to walk out of the theater mad that you, uh, you know, spent 20 bucks on a date night? Probably not. It's probably going to be fine. Um, and if you do see it on a, on a big screen, definitely check it out at Movie Tavern if you have one near you. Always want to say thank you to them. 
for um, you know letting us shoot the show here, see the movies here, all that good stuff. Definitely check them out. And thank you again, Isaac, for, for joining me. I appreciate you taking the time out to do this. Thank you for having me. Looking yeah. forward to some more. Absolutely, yeah. Well, a lot of good summer stuff coming out, so we'll have to do this again for yeah. sure. Yeah. All right, well, thank you guys uh, also for watching and subscribing. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell so you get a notification every time we upload a new review, which we try to do each week for the biggest release. But until next time, we'll see you. Peace. Antonio, you muffin smuggling pirate puncher. You muffin smuggling pirate puncher. I'd do her. Hell, I'd even pay. <laughs> Just kidding. I would. A little bit extra. It's -a me, a Mario!